Welcome to the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, a podcast designed to help you increase your influence, develop your leadership, and maximize your results. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast episode. This is the second podcast episode in a series. I wanted to do just kind of a a little mini series um, in between some of the other podcast episodes that I'm doing this year, but this is the second one in a series of how to increase your influence podcast episode, because I thought it was really interesting to break down the different scenarios and the different situations of how we can increase our influence. Now, absolutely, the principles always apply, but hopefully as I break these down in the different scenarios and different situations, it helps you see how those principles might apply to your situation, right? Some practical information that helps you understand fundamentally how to increase your influence in certain specific situations. So as I started the list Uh, for this podcast series and the different topics of how to increase your influence in this situation, how to increase your influence in that situation. What I realized is I probably should have started the series with today's episode of how to increase your influence with yourself. Because essentially, the essence of leadership and influence starts with first leading ourselves well, because the choices that we make as an individual are directly affecting our influence, either positively or negatively, with the people around us. And so the the choices that we're making in the physical dimension, for example, are affecting our influence in a positive or negative way. The choices that we make socially, the choices that we make spiritually or in our values dimension of life are in part largely determining our influence with the people around us. And so it's realizing that number one, those values or those choices or those decisions that we make, those are our responsibility, right? No one can tell you that what you value is the wrong thing to value or the right thing to value. It has to be the right or the wrong thing for you from your perspective, because they're your values. But it's critical to understand that these are directly infecting our influence in specific situations. So I think that's why it's fundamental to understand that first, I've got to understand how do I increase my influence with myself? And the reason I think this is timely is because this podcast episode is coming out, it's February 1st, and millions of people all around the world have thrown in the towel on their new year's resolutions. And I did a podcast episode about that uh, a few episodes back, but, but the thing is, is that most of these people committed to something that they wanted, some change they wanted personally or professionally. And at the end of the day, a few weeks went by and they decided it was no longer worth working for. Right. And so that tells me that a, they really weren't interested in this new year's resolution or this goal, they really were, you know, just not committed to it. And by that, I mean, they were interested in having it happen, but they weren't committed to making the sacrifices necessary to bring it about. And that's not unusual. I mean, we've all told ourselves that we would do something or don't do something. And then we've gone back on that commitment to ourselves. And yet it's important to realize that every time we make a commitment to ourselves and we don't keep it, we are decreasing our influence with ourselves. And that makes it less likely that the next time we make a commitment to ourselves, we'll be able to keep it. And so the question is, how do, I, how do I increase my influence with myself? How do I develop my character so that when I tell myself I'm going to do something, I know absolutely I will stick with it. I will keep that commitment that I've made to myself. Because that's really the challenge, isn't it? I can remember, you know, several, several, several years ago, it would be, it, my day would go something like this. I'd, I'd wake up in the morning and step on the scale and decide, oh, I need to lose some weight. And first off, that's the wrong mindset toward your health and, and stewardship of your health. But that's a subject for a different podcast. And so, you know, right there in that moment, I'd think, oh, well, I need to do something different today. Maybe I'll just have a protein bar for lunch and a protein bar for breakfast, and then I'll eat a salad for dinner. 
right? And that that commitment to myself would last in, until mid morning when I was hungry, and then I've long since devoured the first protein bar. And maybe I go ahead and devour the second protein bar and then I reach for a snack and then I throw that healthy eating resolution out the window and I have a cheeseburger, right? And maybe you haven't experienced that in the physical dimension, but a lot of us can relate to telling ourselves that we'll do something or carry through with something and then later throwing it out the window because it's ultimately not something we're committed to. We'd love for it to happen, but not at the cost of what it's going to take to get there. So Stephen Covey talks a lot about this in his book, First Things First. And that habit is really all about habit three of the seven habits of highly effective people. So, you know, if you're familiar with the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey, he did a whole book on habit three, right? The first habit is be proactive. The second habit, you know, begin with the end in mind. And the third habit is first things first. So he did write an entire book dedicated to first things first, right? And that habit really is talking about, you know, now that I recognize that I'm in control, I'm writing the, the program for my life, so to speak, then now I've got to put that program in place and implement it. And that comes down to living out priorities. And so he goes and, you know, into a whole in-depth uh, perspective and discussion about that. It's a, it's a good book. But what I wanted to dig out of it today and share with you is he talks about how every time we make a commitment, no matter how small, every time we make a commitment to ourselves and we keep it, we are building up our personal integrity. And every time we break a commitment to ourselves, we are decreasing our personal integrity. Another way to say that is every time we make a commitment to ourselves, and we keep it, we're increasing our influence with ourselves. We're making it more likely that we lead ourselves more effectively the next time around. So for example, uh, you know, many, many years ago, I realized that exercising first thing in the morning worked really well for me because not much gets in the way at five o'clock in the morning. There's not a whole lot going on. And so I realized that if I was going to make exercise a priority in my life, I needed to schedule that early in the morning because that meant that I would get it done before anything else had a chance to pop up and get in the way. And this, you know, <laughs> making that that commitment to myself was easy to do but when the alarm clock goes off the next morning at 4 30 and it's time to get up and go to the gym early that was a whole lot more difficult to stick with it right in that moment when the alarm clock goes off and you're like oh but I'm so warm and comfortable I don't want to get up out of bed sounded good last night not so much this morning right but in that moment Building up our integrity with ourselves is important because we know we're more likely to do it again. Now, it took me a while to get to that point, but but now at this point, I've, I've built up that influence with myself so that I don't even think about an early morning commitment to get up and exercise, right? It's just so, it's, it's so ingrained of a habit at this point that I know without a doubt, if I make a commitment to myself, hey, I'm going to get up tomorrow and go work out early or go run early. I know I have enough influence with myself that no matter how good the bed feels the next morning when the alarm goes off, actually most of the time it doesn't even go off, but, but no matter how good the bed feels right there, I know I have enough influence with myself in that dimension regarding that commitment that I just get up and do it. I don't second guess it. I don't ever give myself permission to renegotiate in the moment. And that's just a result of having done it. Now, here's the key. The key to all of this, whether you're interested in increasing your, self, your influence with yourself physically or emotionally, maybe you want to start a, a personal growth habit, but you're like, I work out all day. I come home, I clean house, I cook dinner. And then I don't want to, the last thing I want to do is pick up a book and, and learn something because you're tired at the end of the day, right? But, but maybe you know that that's going to help you move forward in your life. And so maybe that's a, a perspective that you want to increase your influence with yourself. Maybe it is an exercise habit. That's common for a lot of people this time of the year. We could go on and on. There's so many different habits and choices that we make of that each one of us can adopt in, in order to become the, the best version of ourselves. But the key to all of that, 
regardless of what dimension of life you're wanting to lead yourself better, the key to that is to make that, that commitment, those early commitments when you're just starting off, small. And I've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating because this is such a powerful principle and most of us don't take full advantage of it because we don't really understand how effective it is. See, if I can make the commitment to myself, the agreement with myself about changing a habit or starting a new habit or, or stopping a habit, I've got to make that commitment to myself so, 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 so tiny that I absolutely know without a doubt it will be a no-brainer to do it, right? So maybe this could look like if you want to start an early morning exercise habit, maybe it doesn't mean that, you know, if you normally wake up at 7.30 tomorrow, you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to get up at 5.30 tomorrow. No, if you normally wake up at 7.30 and you want to start building this habit in, into your life, then set your alarm clock for 7.29, right? Could you, get it, could you get up one minute earlier? Well, yeah, that's a no-brainer. You would tell yourself and you'd be like, Pfft. That's not even worth it. I'm going to set my alarm clock for 6.30. No, start small. Make that commitment to yourself so, so tiny that you know there's absolutely no excuse you cannot carry through with it because that's the key. Because if you make that commitment and tomorrow morning the alarm clock goes off at 7.29, maybe it didn't even go off because you're so used to getting up at 7.30. You, you woke up just a little bit early today and you kept that commitment to yourself, tomorrow you've got, a you've got a little more personal integrity. You've got a little more of a track record or a little more discipline and momentum in leading yourself well, right? You're increasing your influence with yourself because every interaction that we have, we're either building influence or we're decreasing it. And it's exactly the same principle when we're talking about, you know, last month we talked about increasing influence with the boss or at work. It's the exact same principle applied on a personal level. When I make a commitment with myself, that interaction is either going to increase influence or decrease it. If I make that commitment and I keep it, I'm increasing influence. I'm building trust in the moment. I'm building integrity with myself in saying, you know what? I, when I make commitments to myself, I keep them. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect or that we're always going to get it right. But my point here is that you don't have to get it right all of the time. But every time you do, it's going to make it easier and easier over time. So one of the favorite things that I like to say relative to this is when you get off track, give yourself some grace, but don't miss twice. Right. If you're trying to build up a consistent habit and leading yourself or influencing yourself, there, life is going to get in the way at some point, and that's okay. Give yourself some grace if you get off track, but don't miss twice, right? There are certainly nights that we, you know, we're traveling and on the road, and we get home very, very late, and I will think to myself, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm only going to get four hours of sleep. Do I really want to get up early and go exercise? And the answer might be yes, or it might be no, and that's okay, but don't miss twice. That means the next day I absolutely need to get up and get back on track because I don't want to build a pattern of inconsistency relative to the habits that I'm incorporating, right? If I've decided this serves me, then I don't want to build a habit of renegotiating within myself because I know that I want to continue to build the habit and build the momentum of, of leading myself. When I make that commitment, I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow through on it. Now, it's okay some days if I'm like, you know what, tomorrow it's not a good idea to make that commitment because I need more sleep or because this is going on. But if I do make that commitment, then I need to be able to just have that track record of keeping to it, being consistent, right? And that's really the key to increasing our influence with ourselves. Now, if you're struggling with the commitments that you're making to yourselves, it's time to re- examine the values, right? Because the values that you have are determining how you think about the choices and commitments you're making. They're determining how you feel about the choices and commitments you're making. And that's determining a large part of your discipline and following through, 
So if you're struggling with where does an exercise habit fit in my life, for example, then it's time to think about, well, why don't I value this? And, and maybe it's not a question of values, but maybe I need to, to rethink how this can fit, how I can make it work. If I do value it, I will be committed to figuring out a way that I can make this fit into my life or my schedule or my day. And if I don't value it, I'll find an excuse because I love to say you can make something happen or you can make an excuse, but you can't make something happen while you're making an excuse until next time.